what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy Kush back at it again with another Giants update video. This is going to be a quick one. I got a little time in between classes. Want to get this out to y'all. Shout out to Ed in my Discord. He was the first person that notified me of this. This was last night. But, uh, you know, you guys look at the community post, so you know why I wasn't able to stream last night. You know, I was studying. I got a test later today in about two hours. It is what it is. You know, we're going to keep it rolling. So, Ed told me that the Giants cut Damian Rally and they elevated Austin Mack, or officially signed Austin Mack, to the active squad. Like I said, didn't have time to make a video about it last night. I'll make one right now. Let's get into it. Along with other news, who they plan to sign since that um they cut... Damian Rally. apparently there's the extra spot now. They want to sign an outside linebacker, Trent Harris, to the practice squad. So let's talk about Damian Rally first of all. And I got a little article here pulled up from Giants Wire. Shout out to those guys whenever I do any type of these update videos. A lot of times I go to them. So it starts off with the Giants made a series of roster moves on Tuesday evening, which included the release of wide receiver Damian Ratley. The Giants had claimed Ratley off of waivers from the Cleveland Browns immediately after a cut down in September. He appeared in all five games this season, hauling in four receptions for 63 yards. However, Ratley made a tremendous error in a 37-34 loss to the Dallas Cowboys in Week 5, getting a little anxious with his route and drawing an offensive pass interference call, which cost the Giants touchdown. So first off, let me talk about Damian Ratley. This guy honestly should have never been on the team in the first place. We we had cut Corey Coleman in place of him, and it's funny, Damian Ratley also replaced Corey Coleman when Coleman was cut from the Browns. So you know that got a stuck um, that got a stung Corey a little bit. But we cut Corey Coleman to bring in this guy in Damian Ratley, who is younger, who still has you know the same amount of speed as Coleman. But honestly, the Giants should have given Coleman his you know the chance that he earned on this team. He didn't get to show it last year because of his injury. It should have been this year, and he was performing a lot in you know training camp and in the short offseason that the NFL had. But for whatever reason, they decided not to go with Corey Coleman. I will say this, kind of playing devil's advocate, Corey Coleman, as good as he has been in training camp and in the offseason, is still a free agent on the NFL market right now. So that goes to show you, maybe there is something that other teams are also seeing that the Giants saw in him that was like, all right, he's not going to make it. Um, as a starter on this team or he just doesn't have it. Maybe they're, they're thinking it was just practice He's not gonna do it in a live situation game and even more to that devil's advocate thing People that are struggling on the team right now were people that were sort of training camp standouts You talk about guys like uh, Nick Gates who was a training camp standout and and Will Hernandez They were like all oh, these guys are doing great not doing so good <laughs> um in the in the live regular season same thing goes for the wide receivers like CJ board who did good is not doing good right now Evan Ingram who until week five honestly didn't really have that much of a good game and Ingram did disappear in the second half Devonte Downs who like completely earned his job straight off of, you know just performing well in the offseason has been replaced by Tay Crowder at this point and you know Devonte Downs certainly didn't do good like I could go on and on there's other players that I could name but the training camp standouts aren't exactly translating to the regular season. So maybe uh, Corey Coleman won't translate to the regular season. I don't know. But I think we should try and bring him back on. Um, he should have been on the team in the first place instead of Ratley, like I said. And honestly, I don't think he could be worse than Damian Ratley. But we do elevate Austin Mack now, which I... You know, I love the fact that we finally actually signed him to the active roster. He was elevated last week, but wasn't signed. And, you know, let's get into it. Let me continue with the article. This is actually a quote from a Giants uh, wide receivers coach, Tyke Tolbert. He says, he was supposed to let Darius Slay in clear. He runs a route, he comes underneath, and he comes back out. The problem was as he was running his route, he went inside, and the guy who was covering Slayton ran into him. There just happened to be a collision, and there was the officials. They made the right call. Um, So... I guess that explains the call. One of the three calls in that game, in my opinion, that were complete BS. Those were one of the two ticky tacky calls that um, called back touchdowns. The other one being the Cam Fleming one. Listen, in my opinion, this shouldn't even been called because, like Ty Tober said, the goddamn defensive back ran into Damian Ratley, even though Ratley messed up his route. That's not even his fault. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the defensive back that ran into him. It's not Ratley doing pa offensive pass interference. It cost us a touchdown, but it was one too many mistakes for the coaching staff, I guess, and for the Giants staff in general, because Ratley hasn't been good. Whenever he's out there, he's dropped a couple balls. He's not getting open. They got rid of him. I mean, maybe they're going to look into getting rid of CJ Board soon. Who knows? I do think another one of these 
um, guys on the practice squad like a, you know, Derek Dillon, Benjamin Victor deserves a look to probably be called up. Who knows? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Or maybe you cut CJ Board once again to bring on Corey Coleman. So here it goes. Replacing Ratley on the 53-man roster is the undrafted wide receiver Austin Mack, who is being promoted from the practice squad. The Giants officially signed Mack from an Ohio State product following the 2020 NFL Draft. And you guys know my thoughts on Mack. I think he's a really good route runner. He has good height to him. Um, he has good speed to him. You know, average speed, average height. But what really stands out about him is his route running. So I do hope that that helps him get open a little bit in this Jason Garrett scheme. Um, which more so for some reason this year relies on wide receivers getting open themselves and rather than the play calling getting them open. Um, hopefully Mac can get open. Hopefully he has safer hands than Rally. I would assume he has safer hands than Rally from the limited knowledge we have of him in college and whatnot. Um, personally, he wasn't the guy I wanted to be elevated, but it's better than nothing. And I fully expect Mac to have at the very least the same impact that Damian Rally have. I hope it's better than that though. And now it goes into the middle linebacker that the Giants are interested in signing. It says, finally, with an open spot on their practice squad, the Giants are expected to sign linebacker Trent Harris, who visited with the team on Friday and is currently finishing up COVID-19 testing. There's a tweet here by Arch Stapleton. It says, Giants are signing outside linebacker Trent Harris to the practice squad after today's workout. Per source, uh, more on Harris's connection with Patrick Graham and Joe Judge in this other tweet here by Arch Stapleton. It says Harris, 24, played 11 games with three starts last season for Patrick Graham in Miami. He had one and a half sacks, 22 ta tackles, and a forced fumble. So it does make sense to kind of add his skill set into this mix right here. And then he was also an undrafted free agent out of the University of Miami. He spent his entire rookie season with the Pats where he had a connection with Judge. Obviously, Judge was the wide receivers and uh, special teams coordinator on the Patriots. So there's the coaching connection. It's very similar to Ryan Lewis, who the Giants did sign. And the article does mention that Ryan Lewis had connections with Patrick Graham in Miami. He came in. He had a pretty good debut. His follow-up game, not so good. Obviously, the couple of uh, tosses down to Michael Gallup as the game ended. But up until then, Michael Gallup didn't really make an impact on the game. And, you know, it's, it's Ryan Lewis. It's not exactly like the dude's a first-round pick. So your expectations got to be tempered by him. But he, he's performing good for what he's costing. If we get... get any type of performance like that out of this Harris kid, then I'll be happy with it. I mean, the Giants went from being really stacked in terms of quantity at outside linebacker to being thin as both of their starters are gone right now uh, with Lorenz Carter being out for the season. I think Zimenez is out for at least two or three more weeks. We're going to need some more help at outside linebacker for sure. And with the wide receiver too, even though we elevated Austin Max, Sterling Shepard is still out. It doesn't look like he's going to be returning this game. It's at this point, the Giants should very seriously look into, in my opinion, possibly signing another one, like I said, like Corey Coleman, or maybe even trying to make a trade for one. Uh, and that might be a big thing. But put your thoughts and comments down below. Let me know what you guys all think. Let me know what you think about Ratley, Coleman, uh, Austin Mack, this Harris guy, and maybe even somebody else that you might have an idea that should come onto the Giants right now. That's it for now, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.